Hello, my name is Robel Gaither and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today on my channel, I'm gonna be taking you guys along on the process of me making these really dope crossbody bags that are unisex. And honestly, but when I was designing these bags, I was kind of going through a little bit of a creative block. Like I wanted to create something. I didn't know what I wanted to make. Um, I've kind of been fiddling back and forth between a crossbody bag that's unisex, um, but I was struggling on designing that because a lot of people ask me and DM me like, oh, can you make bags for men? You know, I'm a man, I wanna wear a bag, da 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 da. But it was so hard for me to decide on a design that both, you know, men and women can wear because if I'm, if I'm, if I'm being honest, men dress very boring. So it's kind of hard to design for men because, you know, I don't know. I, I just I just didn't know what to do. So for me, a lot of the stuff that I make, I consider it unisex because you know I'm the type of person where if I like something, I'm gonna wear it, whether it's purse, bag, pack, what well, you know, whatever it is, if I like it, I'm gonna wear it. So that's just personally me, but a lot of men are not like that. So I did have to factor that in. So today I made these really dope unisex crossbody bags and they are so freaking dope. Like I, I I have nothing else to say but the fact that they're dope. Okay, this bag is made of three different colors of denim. So we have a dark blue denim, we have a light blue denim, and then a medium blue denim. And you know, it's consistent all the way throughout. So another reason why I decided to do this type of design was because I haven't done a design with multiple colors of denim in a while. And I like using multiple colors of denim because you know, designing is fun. You gotta have to um, balance all the colors out perfectly because if there's too much of one color, it can overpower the others and it can take away from the design. So you have to have a really nice balance. And it was really fun designing these. It was amazing, they came out amazing. And the interiors on these are also dope. This one's stuffed, but this is the interior. It has a little mini zipper pocket, my logo, and then a slit pocket on this side. And it is a brown waterproof interior. I love it. The quality is amazing, and it is an adjustable strap. And this is perfect for both men and women. Like, this is something that I would rock every single day. Like, if I'm going to Trader Joe's, if I'm going to Walmart, if I'm going to Target, if I'm going to... I would put this on. Yes. So if you do want to stick around and watch me make this bag, I made two of them. This is the this is just one of them. So if you do want to stick around and watch me make these, watch to the end. Make sure you give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And ooh, let's get into the video. That was ugh. All right. So it is May 26. It is currently like 3:42 around that time frame, and I'm still in the pre-production phase. I normally never film during pre-production. I only film during production. Um, so pre-production just consists of me like cutting out fabric, embroidery, interfacing, all of that good stuff. So the reason why I'm filming is because I have to actually piece together the front and back body piece of the exterior of this bag. Cause I'm doing this really cool like curvy design and I've done this design before for a custom order commission and I loved the way it turned out and everybody else loved how it came out too. So I thought it would be really cool to try it again. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show like pretty much the pieces and what I kind of have to do. So this is like the top portion of it and then this is the bottom portion. So um, it's kind of hard to hold. These again, this is uninterfaced denim. So I normally never show anything uninterfaced. This is how the material is before it's interfaced. It's like super floppy, no structure whatsoever. Um, is this even the right piece? Hold on. I don't even, okay, that's not even the right pieces. That's probably why it's hard to hold up. So essentially, you know, I would piece it together to get this curvy look because they're two separate pieces right now. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I have all the pieces cut out. Um, I don't wanna interface until I, you know, I get my front and exterior pieces done because then I would have to come back. So go back and interface. So I wanna do everything at once. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these pieces together to get the front and back exterior pieces. And then I'll show me um, sewing that together and then I will do the interfacing and then I'll come back and do all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these um, front exterior pieces, back front and back exterior pieces, and then I'll check back in. Okay, so it is the next day. I now have everything finished and interfaced. So I have the pieces kind of 
um, snap together. So this is kind of an idea of what it's gonna look like. I think this concept is so freaking dope. Now, um, I did just do a spring collection um, that kind of has the same detailing, that kind of has the same detail flap as this one. This one's a little bit more exaggerated to kind of match the shape. Um, it does kind of look like the Dior saddle, the way that the shape of the flap is. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not trying to copy Dior at all. It just so happens to, it, it just so happens to have similarities. So, um, cause I know when I dropped my spring collection, there were a few comments. I was like, this looks like the Dior saddlebag. This looks like, like the Dior saddlebag just because the flap has that same detailing. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to call these. I think they're, it kind of reminds me of something like a waterfall. So I might name it something like that, but all the pieces are interface. So this is how the back is looking. Again, I sewed it together, interfaced it. So it has an interfacing. So now the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to top stitch along um, this edge piece. And one reason why I'm top stitching is just to get the detailing. I love a good top stitching. That's my favorite part of sewing. And I'm also top stitching just to tack down the seam allowance to the facing so that it doesn't try, try to start lifting up. Um, so it has design and functionality behind the top stitching. So um, I'm gonna top stitch that and then also on the front, I'm gonna top stitch along this piece right here. So this is the underside of the flap. And for these bags, I'm doing two magnetic snaps because of the way that the flap is um, so that it snaps a little bit easier. I hope that it's not too hard to open this bag up with these snaps because these snaps are a tad bit strong. Um, so I hope it's not too difficult to open the bag with the flap. The reason why I didn't want to do one was because I didn't want to just put a magnetic snap down here. I thought it would be weird because then this side of the flap would kind of not be stuck down to the bag and it can kind of just look like it's lifting off the bag, which can throw the design off. And I also didn't want to just put a snap right here because then this part and this part can look like it's lifting. On my spring collection, I just put a snap right here and it worked fine, but this is a little bit of a different um, shape. So hopefully it's not too bad. Um, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do, like I said, is top stitch this. So that's what I'm going to do. And then that's what you're going to see. And, um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch this, sew the flap together, attach it, and then check back in. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done and let's start sewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I just finished putting the back exteriors together. So this is pretty much what we have going on. I went ahead and put the rivets on off camera just because I didn't feel like filming that part. But I put the rivets on off camera and the rivets is not really for, de I mean, it can be for detail, but it's really just to protect these corners right here because these are considered stress areas on a flap. Um, you know, when you're opening the flap and all that stuff is getting stressed and pulled. So these rivets just reinforce this area so it doesn't wear and tear over time and the stitches start coming undone. So it's for functionality, but it can also be for design as well. A lot of design functionality going on. Um, and then this is the other one right here, same exact thing. So I'm really loving this detail. And um, the first time I did this style design, it's inspired by this designer called Cody Phillips. He does these amazing curvy jeans and I bought a pair and I was inspired to um, recreate that design into a bag and I did it for a custom order and it was a lot more difficult due to the heat pressing method that I was using at that time to interface my, um, to fuse my interfacing to my fabric. But I'm using an actual professional heat press this time and the fusing is just so much better, no issues whatsoever. The quality is just really good. So I'm super excited about how this is turning out. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I have these little um, 
shop connectors right here. I have four of them that I have to sew up to for one, um, two is going on each bag. So I'm gonna sew up these little strap connectors and attach them to the bottom gusset of the bag. And then um, from that point, I would just sew up the exterior and then it would be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing up these strap, um, strap connectors. And then, yeah, let's get into doing that. Alright, so I just finished putting on the strap connectors to the bottom gussets of the bag and then I also went ahead and put the rivets and I did the double rivets because again, I've just been feeling the double rivets. I like adding one, I mean adding two, but I think one in the center just looks weird because it just leaves too much space around the rivet so it kind of looks odd so I put two. So I have the rivets and strap connectors done. So now what I have to do is go ahead and attach the bottom gusset to the front and back exteriors of the bag. Um, which then would pretty much form the exterior and then from there I would just work on the lining So um, now what I'm gonna go ahead and do like I said is just sew up the bottom gusset And I think these colors once everything's all good and just done They're gonna look so good together and complement each other really well um, So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these gussets on to the front and back exteriors and then that's what you're gonna see And then I'll check back in once that's done All right, so I finished sewing up the exteriors. They're inside out right now. I'm not gonna turn them right side out yet because the way that I'm gonna put the linings in, they need to be inside out. So this is how it's looking pretty much from this way. You can't tell much. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see it really, but I can tell that it's gonna be a really dope design. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the lining. So I'm gonna do, for the lining on these bags, I'm gonna do a zipper pocket on the back side and then a little slip pocket on the front side. And honestly, I was debating if I should even do a zipper pocket only because a zipper pocket is going to be this small. Um, but I need to put a zipper pocket for the way that I wanna close the lining on this bag. So I'm just gonna put it anyways. You probably, you're not really gonna be able to put much in these zipper pockets, but like coins, maybe chapstick and little, little tiny stuff, nothing too crazy. Um, and then this is the zipper that I'm gonna use. I think it's gonna be really dope on this brown, like a sandy type color. And then it's gonna be the slip pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing up this lining and then um, attaching that to it. And then I'm probably not gonna finish these bags and I'm definitely not gonna finish these bags tonight, but I'm probably just gonna get the lining, like the zipper pockets and uh, my name tag sewn, sewn on. And then tomorrow I'll probably finish the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and that's what you're gonna see. So let's start sewing.
All right, so it is the next day. I plot twist, I decided to go ahead and just sew up the linings, attach them, and flip the bags right side out. I did not top stitch them yet or close up the lining, so the bag still needs some completion. But this is what we have. So ignore like the little wrinkles and stuff. I did not do any final pressing because again, I still have some final things to do. But I mean like, I mean like, it's, it's just amazing. I don't know what to tell. I love this design on it. So they look super dope. They're amazing. Love how they're coming out. So now what I have to do is I need to go ahead and top stitch these bags along the top exterior of them because I have not done that yet. So I'm going to go ahead and um, flip these linings and put the clipping, the little clips on so that I can top stitch these. And then from there, after I do that, I have to close up the bottom of the lining and then close up the zipper pocket and then do the straps and then I'm done which is crazy this has been a pretty much I would say probably like a one and a half day production process but pre-production like two I say total this is like a three day pro mm, three and a half day project so I'm gonna go ahead and um, finish these off do the straps and then check back in once they're done and I'm super excited so let's get into top stitching All right, so it's been a few days later now and everything is done and complete. I just finished actually taking product photos. I have to edit that and get everything ready for on my website because uh, I do want to drop these bags this Friday, which is June 3rd. So I'm going to go ahead and show the finished product. They're so freaking dope. Like, this is so dope. I really do love these bags. I love the design and just the way everything just looks together, it's amazing. And I love the fact that the straps are adjustable because with adjustable, there's so many different ways you can wear it. You can wear it crossbody, you can make it really short, do almost like a shoulder bag style, or you can wear it like a purse. I mean, and it's also just really good because some people are tall, some people are short, so you can adjust the straps to fit your height, which is why I love doing adjustable straps when I do need to do long straps. Um, I very rarely do not um, it's very rare if I make a bag with a long strap and I don't make it adjustable. I just really think that strap should be adjustable. So this is how it's look really dope and I'm going to show the inside too. So this one has stuffing in it, but the inside is really dope. So the zipper pocket is super small. I think I was talking about that when I was actually design, um, showing me uh, put the zipper pocket in. I can't remember or not, but the zipper pocket is super small. You probably, it's really... <laughs> Honestly, I only added the zipper pocket in just so that I can use my way of closing the lining up. Um, but I mean, you can put coins and little things in here, but that's really about it. It's a really small zipper pocket. And then you have your slip pocket right here, which is you can fit a good amount of stuff in there. It's a perfect slip pocket and you have your center compartment. It's kind of hard to see. Um, and another thing I was kind of worried about too was that it would be hard to open um, the flap which it's not that hard. So if you just kind of take it and open it from the center, it's really not that hard. Um, but if you try to open it, you know, from like this, I would not recommend doing that because over time it can distort the flap because, you know, it'll kind of make it all wonky. So I would recommend pulling open from the center, which it can be kind of hard because it is two magnetic snaps and they are kind of strong. But I mean, like, you gotta take care of your things. So this is amazing. I also went ahead and made the duster bags off camera. So this is a dust bag right here for it. I went ahead and did that. I finished those up, um, finished these up yesterday. 
So everything is all said and done. I do not have a price yet because um, I did not add up the hours of time that it took me to make and add up the cost of materials yet. Um, but it's probably going to be anywhere between $375 and $415. So that's going to be the price range for um, both of these. So by the time you're watching this video, both of these bags should be up on my website. Um, and if they are, depending on when you're watching this video, if you're watching this video maybe months or years later, it, they're probably not up there. But you know, if you're watching it as soon as I drop this video, they should be up on my website. Um, shipping is included in the cost, comes with the dust bag, all that good stuff. And I, re I really just love them. Like these are just so amazing. And I really love the fact that I was able, I feel like to stay true to my style of designing, but also be able to make something that's unisex, that both male, that both men and women can wear, which is, honestly a challenge when you're because you know when you're doing stuff like that you kind of be like okay well i have to make sure i get both of these things in here and it's hard to design for men already as it is woman it's so much easier to design for because you know you have so much more freedom to play around and all this type of stuff but a lot of men are not a lot are not as comfortable you know with playing around and doing different things with their style and clothing and things like that so it's a little bit more harder to, to design for men so that's what i was struggling for um struggling with when designing but I think I pretty much ate. So this is the finished product. If you do like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think and make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification because again, like I always say, I'm uploading and uploading and uploading. I'm getting back into the grind of YouTube. Super excited about that. And then also all of my social medias will be on the screen. So if you want to keep up with my business or just follow me in general, and just you know see what i'm doing see what things i'm creating my social medias will be on the screen or the description box and my website will also be linked in the description box below as well so i thank you guys for watching this is the end of the video and i'll see you guys in my next one deuces